Hi, I'm Brent Stafford and this is RegWatch by RegulatorWatch.com. The Ontario provincial government dropped a bombshell this week, announcing it would implement its new anti-vaping regulations after all. As we reported last December, the Liberals backtracked on their e-cigarette regulations after their exemption for medical marijuana came to light. The controversy forced the Wynn government to delay the start date and to go back to the drawing board, which provided a glimmer of hope for Ontario vapors. That hope was dashed this week when the Liberals announced they are abandoning the medical marijuana exemption, with Premier Wynne stating her government has determined that smoking, whether that be vaping, medical marijuana or cigarettes, should be restricted and the rules will apply to medical marijuana and to vaping as they do to cigarettes. It's a stunning reversal that paves the way for the province of Ontario to implement its original anti-vaping regulations, which they have now expanded this week to include a broader definition of e-cigarettes, new prohibitions on sale, and significant restrictions limiting how retailers detail and display products in store. The new regulations are now up for a 45-day consultation period and are set to go into force July 1st. Joining us today is Mark Keeley from KNA Consulting, a powerhouse in the development of public policy and legislation across Canada. Mark, thanks for coming on. Your firm represents the Canadian Vaping Association and has been working directly with governments across Canada on vaping regulations. Walk us through that. Uh, we were retained by the Canadian Vaping Association to help them weave through the miasma, and I'm going to say it is miasma, uh, related to all of the, um, the assaults that we've had from Health Canada as it relates to the regulations that were put out uh, nationally, and then every single provincial regulatory framework that has been put out across this country. So it's been a mind-numbing siege for the last uh, 18 months on this issue. Mark, I think a lot of vapors would agree and say they also feel under siege, certainly in Ontario, with today's confusing flip-flop on vaping regulations and the marijuana exemption. I, I want to make this point very clear that when Ontario was going down the path of regulating this industry, it took into account that there are people who wish to vaporize medical marijuana. And when they looked at it in the context of how that would flow, they thought, we will be challenged um, on the charter, so we must include that into the legislation. So the Ontario government boxed themselves in? Ontario made, in my opinion, a very grave mistake by mixing it into a, uh, a charter issue by putting marijuana into the uh, regulations at the start. And that caused this problem that we saw in December. How do you mean? Well, what they should have said was, we're talking about um, uh, vaping as it relates to an alternative to smoking. It's got nothing to do with marijuana. People who vape, uh, mar who vape marijuana are not the same kind of people who would wanna vape uh, an alternative to smoking a cigarette. Why do you think there's so much confusion around the vaping issue? I think that, that regulators or, or governments across this country really don't have the nomenclature down correctly. When they talk about this in the context of, of uh, e-cigarette in the same vein as a cigarette, I think they're wrong. I think uh, what most people are doing is they're saying, I am not going to uh, use a vaping device as a smoking cessation tool. It's an alternative to smoking cigarettes. And so that in and of itself has really been the crux of the issue. Mark, for the CVA members in Ontario, how gloomy is the picture? Well, I, I don't want to give uh, your viewers and the members of the CVA the impression that they're going to ban vaping uh, outright because it's, it's not going to happen. What they're going, what they are saying is that in public places, vaping will be prohibited. And in certain other uh, locations, vaping will be prohibited, consistent to what's happening in the smoke-free Ontario legislation. Mark, the Ontario regulations are now in a 45-day consultation period. This is a critical time to weigh in. I understand that your firm is recommending specific exemptions for vape shops. We're working on that with our uh, resubmission for the regulations, Brent, but what they are saying specifically is that there are places that will be able to display and promote the vaping products, and that's a, a qualified vape shop. So. Uh, we now have an opportunity under this 45-day uh, window uh, for putting our, our uh, uh, amendments on the table to suggest that an exemption be made for vape shops under these specific conditions. So based on your experience working with government, could these efforts be effective? Well, it, it, it not only could be effective, it is effective. Because I'll, I'll tell you this, when we went down the path originally, and I'll, I'll use Ontario as a good example, Brett, that we, we what we had said in this province, in the 
in the legislation, particularly in the legislation, let's have uh, a two year review every year. One of the points that we made that was really accepted by not only the minister, but those on the committee was that the science is really catching up in this sector. It's really catching up in vaping. And so once when folks would say before, well, it's, it contains such and such and such and such and it's bad for your health. Well, science has started to debunk those myths and that misinformation. So a, 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 a two year review is not such a bad thing. And I think we've got some traction on that part. The other issue is, and I think this is an important one, that people who own vape shops are actually qualified. And what we're trying to do is intrinsically make that a lot more stringent as it relates to uh, where the government uh, needs to feel confidence that the, the Canadian Vaping Association is operating uh, with good people to that end, that, that those who are detailing customers who want to choose this alternative to smoking cigarettes are, are selling quality products with quality e-liquids in a quality establishment that adheres to, to principles and standards that are modified in the smoke-free Ontario legislation. So I think we've done a, a, a very good job of varying those two. Finally, Mark, after all this is said and done, do you think the province of Ontario missed an opportunity here? Yes, I, I think the missed opportunity with Ontario was that they didn't embrace stakeholders who want to vape. And it's not vaping because they, they want to ha embrace a lifestyle, it's because they don't want to smoke cigarettes. And that's not taken into account. And I think that uh, what, uh, what uh, Ontario needs to understand is you're, you've gone off on a wild goose chase with this uh, notion about uh, vaping marijuana, which is a sop for whatever, uh, frankly, I, I need for, for governments to understand this. Nicotine doesn't kill you. What kills you is what's inside a cigarette. Well, that's it for this edition of Reg Watch. Before you head off, please like us on Facebook and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. For RegulatorWatch.com, I'm Brent Stafford.